Hello, my lovely friend. Today we are talking about your home and your heart and your happy and how they kind of all go together here. So for the longest time, I neglected my home. I let it be my last priority because, hey, husband's more important. Kids are more important. I'm more important than my home. But I'd kind of forgotten the purpose of my home. And in putting my home as my last priority every time over a long period of time, my home turned into a disaster zone. There is clutter everywhere. And I've decluttered my house top to bottom. I've done the programs. I did a great job. I felt great about it. But when you don't keep on top of it, it happens again. When you don't change your habits that stop you from getting a cluttered home, you get a cluttered home. Because that is just our natural tendency for a lot of us. Um, I actually struggled with shopping addiction for a very long time in my life. So I was just constantly bringing things home as retail therapy. Um, and sometimes I still fall into that trap. And having kids sometimes makes it worse because I love to be the fun mom who just brings my kid home toys. And I did that all the time until I realized, oh crap, buying them so many toys is not helping them with anything. And I'm the only one picking all these up. Something's got to happen here. So ever since setting up my toy library and there's just not room for more toys, I don't bring home a toy unless it's something that my kids actually really, really want and would be beneficial and helpful to them. And we decide on where it's going to go together, whether it's going to go in their room and be their responsibility or go into the toy library and something else has to give. Um, but there's so much more thought that goes into the decision of bringing home a new toy <laughs> than there used to be because it used to just be, oh, it would be fun to have this. Didn't think about the space, didn't think about the usage, didn't think about like, do we already have something similar enough to this that we do not need both? Um, but we're not really here to talk about toys today. I will do a whole training or episode on that later because a toy library is the solution. Um, it's great because you don't have to just get rid of all of the toys. Um, and it's not as much work as rotating out all the toys all the time, but we'll get into that another time. Um, send me an email or comment on me on social media or DM me or something and let me know if you want to hear a lot more about toy rotation or toy libraries because I will get that information if you need it. Now what we are here to talk about today is a little bit of homekeeping in general but for the most part I want to talk about the purpose of your home and how you can create happy spaces to support yourself in your home. So what is the purpose of your home? Is it a storage container? Is it supposed to be a place you go after a long stressful day out in the big stressful chaotic world that you have zero control over? Is it supposed to be a place you come home to after that big long stressful day to be stressed out more by your ever growing to-do list? Is your home supposed to be the only place you feel comfortable enough to yell at your loved ones? Or is your home supposed to be your getaway? Is it supposed to be where you run away from life to? Is it supposed to be your safe space? Is your home supposed to be a place of renewal? A place of connection? Is your home supposed to be where all your children's childhood traumatic moments happen? Or is it supposed to be a place where you create the most beautiful memories that you will keep with you? Your children will keep with them all your lives. So what's the purpose of your home? And you know what? It's okay. I Give yourself grace if you have perverted this purpose because I sure have. I have perverted the purpose of my home. Okay. Your home is meant to be a blessing. It really is a blessing. There's so many people who don't have a home for themselves. 
and I'm not just talking like homeless, I'm talking like families who are living with other families because they just can't. And you have way too many people crammed into a tiny space and no one has, you know, personal space where they can relax and rejuvenate. Um, and in a space like that, if you're in shared space, having happy zones or at least one happy zone to yourself <laughs> would be, is, is like ever more needed. Um, but what is the purpose of your home? When you, when you talk about your home and you try to feel the feelings of your home, how do you feel when you come home at the end of the day? How do you feel when you wake up and walk through your home, that first fresh-eyed, you know, home tour of the day? Do you feel like you are in a place where you are set up to rest? Are you feel like you're in a place to be the best version of yourself? Or do you feel like it's a setback being where you are? Do you feel like you are just overwhelmed and stressed by your space? And it's okay if you do. There, My house, there's a lot to do. Okay, we are in a fixer-upper. It was built in 1925, and it has never been, like, fully restored. And it's been partially renovated in a lot of areas. Like, we don't have trim on any wall. There's no trim. There are floors that are unfinished. Um, like... There's windows that definitely need replaced. <laughs> um, my master bathroom's not even built yet. It's just subfloor and like framed in walls without drywall yet. So you can see through my master bathroom into the boys' bathroom. Like things are unfinished and that feels very, very anxious and um, stressful. And then on top of that, there's clutter in corners um, there's like dirt on the walls from the dogs rubbing up on the wall and no one has been able to find the time or take the time to clean that because when there's so much clutter around and there's so much unfinished, like who's even noticing that right now? Um, so I'm living in a lot of that right now and it is super stressful of a situation, but you know what I'm learning? I'm learning to give myself grace. I'm learning to accept myself as I am where I am and I'm learning to not let the condition of my home affect my personal value okay so let me say that to you whatever the condition of your home it does not affect your personal value it does not affect your worth who you are is not dependent on the state of your home it's not dependent on the value of your home. It's not de dependent on, you know, whether your home is clean or aesthetically pleasing or cluttered or, you know, in the middle of renovations that lasts five years. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change who you are. It simply changes the condition of your home. Now, what I'm going to share with you is how to create some happy zones in your home. Because your whole home, if your whole home is overwhelming to you right now, tackling the whole thing is going to take a lot of work and a lot of time. And it's going to take a lot of your energy. And at the end of the day, even if you find the perfect program or the perfect solution and you start powering through and making all this progress on your home, getting it to be exactly what you've always dreamed it to be because you can love the home you live in. You absolutely can. I believe that. Even if you're putting in all that energy at the end of the day, you need some place to rest. You need some place where you can drown out your mile long to-do list that still is undone. A place where you can reflect on the gratitude of how far you've come, reflect on the gratitude of everything that you already have, when you can reflect on how beautiful your day was and it has nothing to do with how much you accomplished or how much you didn't accomplish, you need a place where you can tune out the to-do list. Okay. 
So for me, like my happy space is outside. For a long time, I didn't even have a happy space in my house. <laughs> like I had to go outside. And then because the outside was torn up because we had goats here on the property before we moved in a few years ago and they ate everything. So it was just two acres of mud pretty much. Um, and then my husband bought his construction business. So there's like construction equipment and mud. <laughs> I'm like, this is not beautiful to look at. So my happy space was standing outside on my porch, looking at the tree line, just the far away distance. I would put on, you know, blinders and just tune out everything around me and just look at the tree line and the sky. And that was where I could be in my happy space because I could tune out all the stress and focus on something that I find to be beautiful. So if your happy space right now has to be outside your home while you're creating happy space inside your home, do it. Find something to look at. Um, there might be something in your home that you, that you love architecturally. Focusing on that can be your home happy zone where you can think about things and ignore everything around you. Um, sometimes ignoring what's around you isn't super easy. So find a small room. Um, you know, your bedroom is a great place to start if you have like the time and energy to put in the work. Bedroom is a fantastic place to start. I know it, it's always the last room on our list of rooms to clean and whatever because guests don't see it. But who uses your house more, guests or you? Whose opinion of your home and whose comfort level in your home is more important, your guests or you? Okay, so every family member should just take their bedroom into their own responsibility um, I mean, of course, unless they're little, little kids, but little, little kids, their safe zone is you. They don't really need a room that is a safe zone when they're super little. They need you and they need you to be calm in order for them to be calm. Okay. Co-regulation. They're going to be, you know, when you're nuzzling them into your chest and all they can feel is your heart racing, can they really calm down? Not as well. They feed off your energy and your tension too. So if you find a calm space, then they have a calm space your little littles. Um, otherwise, everyone should just have their room, be their happy zone. That's easy to do. Um, or you could choose the family room and everyone's happy zone can be the same space to start with. Um, and then you can always work out radiating, growing from there. But I would start with one happy zone for you because you get to set the tone. You get to set the energy level in the house. So if you are just twisted up and chaotic and stressed inside, it's really hard to keep everyone out in the house calm because you're not. So you set the tone. So take care of yourself here. All right. So I chose my bedroom as my happy space. That was the first room that I really fully went through. Okay. So if you're choosing your bedroom, what you want to do is like sweep through it. Um, Get out all the trash, make it clean, um, do all the dusting to brighten up the surfaces, wash your linens, just do this big room refresh, and then go through and like thoroughly declutter things that do not belong in your room, things that do not help you feel refreshed. Get rid of those. Okay. And think about like your bedding. Does your bedding like invite you in? Um, for me, it involved like new sheets, new pillowcases. Um, and we full on got new bedroom furniture because ours was like from college. <laughs> we finally upgraded new bedroom furniture. It's solid wood now. Um, but that wasn't really like the big ta-da that did it all for us. Um, the best part of my bedroom is when there's nothing in there that doesn't belong things that don't benefit you in your room don't need to be in your room. Um, kids toys are forbidden from being in my room. Um, occasionally I find one or two small things they've forgotten and immediately I tell them, Hey, come get this. You got 10 seconds before it's in the trash. 
there is no mercy. Do not leave your toys in my bedroom. You have plenty of space in the house for your toys. Um, I don't live, I don't let children's books be on my uh, bookshelf. It's, it's my books. It's all aesthetically pleasing to me, to my husband. Um, try not to do laundry. Try not to let laundry get piled up in my room. That is one of the big no-nos. But, you know, guilty. I do it too. But I try not to. That's the point. But the one thing that, like, really just makes my room perfect for me, and I love it, is I have this corner between my bed and the wall. Um, just like my little walking path. It's, like, three feet wide between my bed and the wall. And I bought off Amazon this super plushy, like faux fur throw blanket. It is so soft and it, I think it was like 20 bucks or something, not bad pricing. Um, but that thing is so soft and it's this warm orangey brown color. It feels like caramel. And I just melt into that over there on the floor in my corner <laughs> with the lights like dimmed. And that is my, my happy zone. I go there when my back hurts and I just need to lay down somewhere flat. Um, I go there when my kids are being loud and I say, okay, kids, you just play for a minute. I need a minute to myself. Um, I go there to meditate and I go there to do the thing where you like lay on the floor and then you put your legs up the wall. So your body's shaped like an L that, um, with like your feet up. I don't know. I, I can't explain this and I don't know the name for it. But it lowers your cortisol level if you just stay in that position for six minutes. Um, and I go there to do that. I try to do it every single night, like while the kids are in the bath, if I'm not the one in charge of bath time for the night. Um, but like that's my happy space. It doesn't – because then it doesn't even have to be my whole room is clean at the time. It's just this corner. So I find a little pocket somewhere. It doesn't even have to be everywhere. But to have this happy zone that you can go to at the end of the day when you've worked on everything in the other house and you can give yourself grace and you can forget everything that's not finished because your life is not a to-do list. Your life is a to live. Like, oh yeah. When your whole house is overwhelming to get clear and get clean and you're feeling so ashamed over it because society says we have to have these perfect and clean and, you know, whatever houses. I'm busy living my life. All right. And I know you are too. And sometimes when you're busy living and having fun and creating memories, you forget or you just don't make it a priority or you don't have motivation on the days where you can. Um, but I get it. Houses get messy. People live here. It's okay. Um, but it's great to have a spot to go where you can forget everything that you haven't completed yet because cleaning your house is an ongoing process anyway. Like laundry is an ongoing process. It's never going to be done. It's ongoing. Just like eating. You have to eat again. You're just done for now. You're never finished eating forever. <clears throat> so if you focus on just like one or two small spaces, that can be a space where you go and you just restore yourself. Oh my goodness. You can conquer the world.